Spoilers for chapter 1077 of the One Piece manga. If you're not caught up, feel free to keep scrolling. Now let's get into chapter 1077. Should have noticed sooner. So the chapter starts with Sentomaro basically explaining to the other scientists that this is a very bad situation that we're in because remember what happened back at Ohara? They're about to do that again here at Egghead. He says they may want to erase Vegapunk, and if that's true, then a situation even worse than Ohara might happen here. And based on the fact that one of the Gorosei is on the move, I'd say, yeah, they're planning something a little bit more than just a standard buster call. Now then we go back to CP0 and Luffy and Zoro fighting against the Seraphim. And they're really struggling in this fight because it doesn't seem like they're doing any damage. Or as Luffy says, why do you guys get up so fast? What are you, Kaido? And then Zoro says, now that I think about it, they kind of look like King. To which Shaka responds, they had a Lunarian, and Zoro says, I don't know what tribe he's from or what his name was. Shaka goes on to say that he's probably Alver, the test subject that escaped from Punk Hazard. And he says these things are strengthened by his Lunarian blood. Zoro then goes on to explain all the weaknesses of Lunarians and how you need to wait for their flame to go out, otherwise they're basically invincible. And he says, I apologize, I made you guys waste energy, basically. I should have noticed that sooner. And this part I thought was funny, because Luchi's like, no, it's fine, at least now we know how to fight him. And then he just basically describes everything about them as signs that they're Lunarian. And then everybody gets mad at him for being so stupid. Now, Shaka gets an inkling that he knows where the main body is, so he decides to head out while everybody else distracts the Seraphim. And we get to Nami's group fighting the Jinbei Seraphim. Nami is pushed to the edge by the fact that all of her friends are hurt, and she decides to unleash her full strength. A direct hit on Jinbei with her lightning bolt. Unfortunately, the Jinbei Seraphim is able to escape. Now, Jinbei decides to re-emerge, however, Sanji decides not. Nah, you don't get to make Nami scream and cry and not be dealt with. So he hits him with the cooked rare strike, kicking him right in the face. And this is the Sanji that I like. I like this strong, defensive Sanji. And he says, I don't care if you are just a little brat or Jinbei, you are going to be put to death. Now then we cut again to the fight with the Boa Seraphim. She's hit with the bubble gun, and it weakens her. It's then explained that these bubbles are essentially sea prism, and they have the ability to weaken the seraphim. Seeing as they have the energy of the sea, I'm assuming these could be used, obviously, very effectively against Devil Fruit users as well. But the effect doesn't last long because it wasn't really a direct hit, and so the seraphim is back up. The boa seraphim begins charging up one of her beams, but is suddenly stopped. And this is because Frankie grabbed a hold of one of the bubbles and essentially pinned her to the ground with it. Now, unfortunately, because Frankie is such a nice guy, she says that she's in pain and he lets her go. And this results in her turning him to stone. Now, before you accuse him of anything, it was a physical attack that turned him to stone, all right? Nothing against my boy Frankie here. Unfortunately, I can't bring up the same defense for these two, though, as they are turned to stone by the Mara Maramello. Because she is aged down, I'm just going to assume that her powers work regardless, or if you feel any type of positive emotion at all towards her, like if you think she's cute in the child way that you would think a child is cute, that she can still affect you. Because I, I refuse to believe that Oda is just going to out all of his characters as weirdos. However, enough talk about that, because now we're moving into the underground Devil Fruit Laboratory. And we see that Shaka has finally found the main body as well as the Cypher Pole agent. And he is clearly not involved. I know a lot of people thought that Shaka might be the traitor, but he's just as surprised as everybody else is. And we'll see another reason why I don't believe he's involved in a second. Now Vegapunk calls over to Shaka, and he says, Who did you come with? This scene I cannot wait to see animated. I feel like this is going to be really tense. Right after he asks, who did you come with? This is the next panel. And whoever just did that to Shaka is on his way down to the main body. The only hope has been shot down is what the chapter ends with. I feel like the traitor is going to be revealed very soon, so get your comments in now with your predictions.